welcome back to Vigor. It is your boy, Stealth Jet, leader of JSS. I should have uploaded this video on a Sunday, which means that I'll be going live on Twitch, and that's my Twitch link right there, in two hours. So at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I should be going live on Twitch. However, if you live in a different time zone and you missed the stream, that's fine. Because I do have a second channel set up to where I upload all my streams. This YouTube channel right here, Jet Killer Optimal, subscribe to that channel because there I'll upload the streams once they are done. Alright? Cool. And one more thing before we dive into the encounter. Many of you have asked me, what headphones do I use? Just search Level 50 Wireless on Google and boom. Those are the headphones I use right there. So if you want to have the same, you know, audio detectability as, I, as how I do in my videos, get those headphones, plug them in, get used to how loud some of the guns are, get used to how scary somebody running straight at you is, then you can play somewhat like me. And the only reason, wait a minute, you know what, let me back up on that point because that might be something to talk about for the rest of this video. So you see me here with my HBRT tied with the VSS for my, fav for my favorite weapon in the game. And I'm going to loot this house. Now usually, before I just started not giving a fuck, I would avoid this house at all costs. But on some occasions, I can get lucky and just rush straight into this house and not get shot at coming out of it. But the trick is this. The longer you stay in here, the more dangerous it becomes. The more dangerous it becomes indeed. So you see, I run out the back side of the house and I run straight up this hill. And you see I'm looking frantically like, why the hell am I not getting shot at? Well... The closest person to me did not have a weapon. That's why I didn't get shot at. You know, I say the closest person. Somebody else spawns near the water where the entrance is to the cavern. So, that's a spawn right there too. Now I'm thinking, is somebody up here? And the whole time I didn't realize that the disruptive tower is right behind me. So I'm thinking it's a jammer, but it's not. We get this caffeine pill, and I want to use this comm station. So I'm going to hop over this rock, and this happens. The best way to remain unseen on night field content is to avoid the hills. But there's a trade-off in that statement. Because when you avoid hills, guess what you run past? Bushes. And you don't know if they're hostile or not until you walk right up on one and the guy sprays you down with a grease gun and kills you. Know what I'm saying? And why do I point that out? Well, I point that out because Homeboy was right here standing up on this hill. How did I know he was there? Well, if you're on the video, you'll see what was behind him from my point of view. A gray sky. And he was standing straight up. So my best advice to you to try to survive on this map when it's nighttime, not when it's daytime, because when it's daytime, it's different. When it's nighttime, try to have something behind you, like a hill. 
You know what I'm saying? Avoid the high areas. You should only go to a high area. And this is me realizing that the barred house and the time safe are in the same area. Try to avoid high elevation. Because I look like right now. So if somebody was on that ridge right there. I could see them. Because what's behind them? The sky. But if I stay below their level, like the level of altitude and whatnot, when they look down, what are they going to see? Pause on that moment. You seen how I got jammed right there? And I don't know if y'all heard it, but I heard it in this gameplay when I was playing it. Somebody is on the other side of that hill. And look, I understand jammers are meant to hide your location. But let me put it to you like this. It's like, okay, when you place down a jammer and you already know somebody's nearby, it's like filling up a bottomless cup of water. It's like pouring water into a glass that has no bottom. Yes, you hid yourself. But the guy definitely knows that, okay, somebody else is here. This is why I ran all the way over here and try to spot them from this angle. Because what is behind them from my point of view? The sky. Now, if I were to rush over the hill and try to find them that way, well, let me, let's talk the cons of that. Number one, there's plenty of bushes. I can't see them. Number two, I don't know what they have. I didn't hear them reload. I didn't hear any kind of gun sound. So I don't know if they have a gun or not. Number three, I have range. I have a scope. If anything, I mean, that's, that's an advantage in and of itself. So I didn't want to rush over the hill and spot old boy by him shooting at me. Now, if you're wondering, Jet, why do you have this assault rifle out and not your HPRT? Well, what does the HPRT have? A scope. And what does this assault rifle not have? A scope. Scopes give off glint. I don't know if he heard me run away and try to relocate. I don't know if he did. But if he didn't, I want to make sure that he doesn't know I'm here. So... As I say this, I aim and I spot him. That's him right there now. It is. But I want to take him out with this assault rifle. But here's the thing about night field content. It hides people really well. So as I fire right there, I'm thinking I'm hitting him in the bush. No, he's not there. And I know he's still here because that's the crows, right? That's Crow saying someone else is near this exit. But he's still over there. Or he was. Wait for it. Nothing. Nothing at all. I don't know what this guy has. I don't know if he has on body armor. I don't know if he, he, if he has a shotgun. I don't know anything. All I know is, is that he was there. Now, my experience is telling me that he's still up on that hill. So, what am I trying to do right now? Remember what I told y'all at, at the very beginning of the video. I stay low. To reduce my chances of getting spotted. I'm assuming he's running straight forward. And that's me checking my camera because somebody's using the detector again. I'm assuming he's running straight forward. Now, why am I assuming that? That's why. The airdrop. He was already headed this way anyway. So, wouldn't it make sense for him to be a part of the last second meta and camp somewhere and wait for this airdrop? And there it goes. Now, I'm thinking to myself, where is it going to land at? Where is it going to land at? And I'm over here on this hill specifically because it is on his path if he went straight nine times out of ten folks 
and I'm going to get back to what I was talking to at the very beginning of the video. Nine times out of ten, whenever I kill somebody, it's because I heard them first, not because I seen them. So I don't want to be necessarily in line of sight with them. I just want to be in the circular uh, area of where I could hear them. What I just said was, I don't need to be looking at them. I just need to be where I think they're going to go. As long as I'm near their path, I still have a chance. But what's crazy is, I still haven't heard this guy since. And you see, I'm up here now, and I'm thinking to myself, if he goes for that airdrop, he's going to take damage. Hella damage. I'm going to know he's going for that airdrop. So let me try to actually play the game and bide my time and see what he does. Now, I know it's been a while since the beginning of the video, but I'm going to talk about what I was going to talk about originally. Why do I play like how I do? Why do I go for headshots only? Why do I try to stay out of line of sight? Why do I not like gunfights, but instead go for minimalistic one-shot kills? It's because when I first played this game, I already had in headphones. So I already knew how important headphones was. Like on my first encounter, I already had in headphones. So hearing those footsteps for the very, very, very first time, that's what gave me the impression of this is a horror game and not a survival shooter game. So those footsteps scared me at the very beginning. That's why I tried to, you know, not be as aggressive because I'm thinking to myself, well, if he can hear me, anybody can hear me. You know what I'm saying? Because even playing field. Turns out that wasn't the case, but let me keep going. Whenever I hear somebody coming, I try to maintain not line of sight but direction of hearing as long as I can hear where they're going I can catch line of sight and that sounds like the guy that I should have killed in the beginning that's why I'm going over here to rush him down now let me say this if I didn't have in headphones and I was forced into gunfights at the very beginning of my career in this game then sure, I might be a more aggressive player. But it's because of the fact I know what's going on, therefore I do things a bit differently. You know what I'm saying? I want to say there's a statement that says what you don't know can't hurt you. So if I didn't hear those footsteps, I wouldn't be as cautious in the first place. You know what I'm trying to tell you? Okay, so enough about that. I think I explained my point enough on that statement. I checked that exit because that's where I heard pistol shots, right? I always check exits for their crows, not necessarily for the person. What I think happened in hindsight right there was he was firing off his pistol rounds in celebration. Because he survived that mortar strike and he was like, oh shit. Boy, would you look at that? I ran away and I survived. Okay, you left the match. That's all you need to do. I'm proud of you. I'm glad I didn't kill you. You knew how to hide. But next time, when somebody who's hunting you down is not me, you will not get as lucky. I guarantee you that. But there's still hope in the fact of somebody might be around. Because that green cube at the top of your screen is a pick me here sign to anybody and everybody who's still in the match. Now, I played this game for a while. I have. So, I've developed some, uh, some reasons and some characteristics and some strategies as to what people do in the game. People will sit not at the obvious exit but the second most obvious exit. I came up with this uh, with this quote when I was a kid. If we play dumb 
and they play smart, we win. Think about that. So, I'm going up here to this exit. But why this one? Well, the nearest one is the most obvious. Somebody should be up here. In this area. But I checked my map. And I'm at this exit. I'm at this exit, excuse me. And nobody seems to be here. Interesting. Maybe nobody is left in the match at all. Maybe nobody is left in the match at all. I do believe this was my first encounter of season 13. So I'm going to farm this mission and then leave. To those of you who are wondering, I think I took one eye down pill. Well, I say that. Y'all can look for yourself at the very end of the match at the post game results screen. But I think I took one eye down pill and kept it moving. That's what I think. So actually, this wasn't my first encounter. This was probably, probably my second. And what you're going to see tomorrow might be my first one. I'm pretty sure. So, is there anything you can learn from this encounter? Well, number one, how to stay hidden on night field content. Well, not really hidden, but try to minimize your chances of being spotted by staying low, not being on a hill, and just keep moving. Because eventually, you want to find somebody, or somebody is going to find you. Until next time, peace.